Oh god, they're really they're really gonna drive this home, aren't they? This is really just stick in the knife, why don't you? Stick the knife in. All the way in. And another flashback. <laughs> I feel like Gojo doesn't need to do laundry. Gojo can just remove the, <laughs> the stains with infinity. It's gonna be expensive. It's gonna be super expensive. <gasps> wow! For what, though? <laughs> I like how she immediately goes to sharing the financial burden. That timing. <laughs> oh man, oh man. No, I don't want to go back. Oh no! No, I wanted to believe that she was okay still, despite all the evidence and everything everyone's told me. And no reason to believe otherwise. That was horrifying. That was a horrifying cut. I don't I didn't like that. This is what's happening. It's just him being broken down. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean... And there's still a fight going on. Jujutsu Kaisen episode 20. Who are we gonna lose today? Oh, what? Whoa. Oh, he's on a high right now. Yeah, there's no more game. This is over. This feels more personal than ever for, for Mahito. What are you even drawing at this point? Yeah, he said that. I don't think that's what he's thinking about right now. One thing that's been coming up a lot in comments recently that I really love is that so far a lot of the villains who are powerful have a sort of ideological connection with pure self-interest and greed and hedonism. Someone pointed out to me that in the conversation between Sukuna and Jogo, that Sukuna basically is telling him his downfall of not being as powerful as he could be was striving for some kind of higher principle or ideal or whatever instead of just giving in to the full pleasure of his powers and destruction etc. This is something that's come up in a lot of shows and I, I think temporarily is kind of a, a defeating thought. Factually, I think you, you do gain an advantage. There is an edge to having fewer principles. Somebody with principles fighting somebody without principles is just doing a lot more work. This, like a lot of things, especially given my very specific lens, is based on a very natural structure where actually it's just much easier for things to, to die or to not exist than it is for them to continue to grow, etc. Life and growth of any kind is kind of against the grain, which is sort of what makes it a miracle. And where it becomes thematically interesting is where that's reflected in humanity and human actions and decisions. So like you can be an embodiment of that growth by working hard and taking on more burdens and using your resources to build constructively, perhaps against the grain or against what's easy or what's natural. Or you could be a negative force, a destructive force, and you can reap real pleasure from that and real victory, real gain. I would argue though that one emerges as being so much better than the other over time. Time. Anybody who's like snatched an immediate gratifying pleasure despite doing something that feels terrible knows what that feels like. Even if you, you don't feel it right away, you pay a cost for it eventually. And that can stack up pretty quick for whatever reason, probably because we're, we're like creatures of this very structure of nature that I'm, I'm talking about. We're sort of wired to be most sustained or satisfied by being on that like constructive helping side because it's more true to the, the essence from which we were born. And also because you end up creating and influencing the very world that you live in. And if you're someone who is uh, destructive or is purely hedonistic, that ends up coming back to you almost immediately in just about every form in your environment. And often you end up with nothing or just way less. Nevertheless, Less, what's what feels right about this and true about this is that it's going to be a challenge and to Mahito's point that is something that anyone who strives to be heroic or to do good has to kind of understand and reconcile with you're picking a very challenging path and you don't really do yourself any favors not looking that square in the face as you pursue it. So my hunch is that this show is now going to build out of this hell, Attack on Titan style, with its own thesis about what actually wins, what actually is good and why. Nah, Itadori Yuji. What's up? Look at some of he doesn't actually want to kill Yuji. There's something to this that's like a Batman Joker thing. Though he clearly just did try to kill Yuji. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? 
Yes! I've been waiting for this moment for so long. <sighs> Bro. Bro is here. Wait, please don't die. <laughs> for the love of God, please don't die, please. I can't lose him too. He's my favorite. <laughs> but no. No, I trust him. I trust him. I believe when we most needed that brotherly energy. Episode 44, Right and Wrong, Part 3. My whole mood just changed dramatically. Let's go. Toto's absence this arc so far is, is so big, so profoundly felt that it, it's almost a character of its own. Where the hell was he? But whatever, he's here now. Speaking of special. Alright, now we can see what happened to him. I'm sure he's been very busy. Oh, they actually got to him. Well, they got there. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. I trust his superior reasoning and logic. Expect nothing less. Yeah, he does that. Yes. <laughs> Oh, he said probably. He said probably. He said probably. I'll take that. We got training to do. <laughs> he would, right? One of the things that most impressed me about Toto and the Hanami arc was the way he pushed the bar for Yuji. So many people have been great to Yuji, pushing his development, fostering him. Toto came in and just completely raised the bar and raised the expectation of Yuji to like the top, which Yuji matched. Why should it be any different now? And maybe that's what Yuji needs the most right now. It's like, oh yeah, you're sad? Get up. Your legs are broken? You're half dead? Well, get up. Do some work. Toto will not stand for this. <laughs> yeah, it sucked. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The <laughs> right. The 100,000 people that were eviscerated. Not me. <laughs> Hurt so much more. He waited a surprisingly long time. Oh man, that's so satisfying. I love his power so much. <laughs> it's so great. Right? I agree with Mihito. Speaking of light in the darkness, my god. Yeah, in two seconds, two minutes, Toto just changes the whole energy. That's interesting. Both of them left him with something, yeah. Keep fighting. Damn, Toto. Burning fields. Thanks. Not exactly healing, but sure, we'll take it. Taking this very literally. She's alive. She's alive. She's alive. She's alive. She's alive. Shut up. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> That's all I needed. Good enough for me. I never doubted for a second. That Toto speech was everything. Interesting that he called that a punishment, carrying what they entrusted him with on his shoulders. Because I get it. The punishment of goodness is carrying that burden forever. Like once you see it, once you accept it, it's just on your shoulders. Always. You can't unsee it. But it's also a gift. It's an honor to understand your role in it. And I feel what he said about not being able to identify the meaning yet, but still moving on anyway, still continuing the fight. It's really practical advice in so many levels. I really do think that, you know, barring tragedy or shocking sudden events, typically a lot of pain, anxiety, unease in life is caused by losing the thread a little bit, not really understanding where you're going or feeling like you can't get where you want to go, feeling stuck, feeling powerless. And those moments are probably inevitable from time to time. I think it can go a long way to, to recognize that it's just a snapshot of how things stand now and is no indication at all of what could be, what you can do, the fact that you can figure it out. You are in the process of figuring it out. And I guess importantly that you're committed to figuring it out. In fact, I think that's, that's sort of a sweetness in the darkness that can turn it on its head a little bit. Being lost and hopeless is terrible, but it also gives you a very, very clear and noble mission, which is to get out of the darkness. There's that fight in you you can draw on where it's like, I am going to get out of this. I am going to figure this out. Things will get better for me. I will conquer this problem little by little. Oh, but for Yuji, what a, what a game changer it is that she might survive. The disclaimer is fair, but too late. <laughs> My hopes are sky high. My hopes are skyrocketed. Top Not Gorilla. Alright, that is a nickname. 
Oh man, put the beat down on him, Toto, please. Yes, it's everything I ever wanted. I worry that Mihito will be able to figure it out though. Oh, that looks real bad. Time for a pause into your mental world to converse with your idol and figure everything out with your sheer logic. Oh, he switched in Yuji. That hurts, but it's also beautiful. Toto thought on this too. Wow, and Toto swapping him in, being such a beautiful thing for Yuji too. Doesn't this feel good? Reunited. For real. God, does that feel good in a sad way. It's interesting that Yuji interpreted that his despair is him running away from the responsibility. But whatever, you know, whatever conceptualization gets you on your feet. And there's still a lot of work to be done. To Yuji's credit, he didn't kill Nanami. And in a very significant sense, he didn't kill all the people in Shibuya. Toto and a lot of the characters who have said similar things before are right in that this is this is the job and it's not because they are evil. There's that temptation when you're, you're powerless to stop something terrible from happening that you are more responsible for it than you are. That it's because of you and your failure. And sure, maybe there are things that that can point to that can be improved on. Maybe one could be stronger, right? But I think it's important at the same time to disassociate from the terrible thing itself. You are not the terribleness. Yuji's failure to stop Nanami's death is not Nanami's death. That was Mahito. Toto, I mean, he's such a great character in that like high reaching, high bar, no excuses mentality that it just feels right all the time, every time. He just has this way of creating a space that Yuji's ready for. He's just saying that because he loves her. Even Mekamaru GPT is in love with Miwa. Miwa's got. <laughs> this is all setting up for a Miwa arc at some point. <laughs> she keeps like bumbling things and being left out. Oh, he's trying to protect his friends. No, you're misreading this. He's trying to confess beyond the grave. Here we go. A little late, but... It's a little bit selfish <laughs> to on some level to do this now, but whatever. I'm a fan of honesty. Can you just keep running this software, whatever it is? I mean, it's not him, but it kind of is. Wow, Mechamaru's death feels like so long ago, jeez. It was not the best, but okay. Um, this explains a lot. I was wondering where they were. Uh, it's so great how, how naturally they they sync up too. Even Mihito can't help but be a fan. I mean, I get it. This track, this this audio will will always, I think, give me PTSD because it was the track used for the Nobara incident. Usually just trusting in Toto too to make these claps. It looks so cool. <laughs> Just the two of them standing together always. It's like great shot, great frame. <laughs> Who you failed to kill. <laughs> Nobara being Nobara and just willing herself into importance. Oh, he made a train. Very on, very on brand, very on theme. He didn't have to do that, but he did. Nice. It never gets old. Okay. Imagine that's just your life, like your destiny is just to become a sword for Mihito. You live your whole life, you live 20-something years, and then sword. Back in the elevator. <laughs> yes.
They can switch with this. And he loves it, setting his own bars. This is a man who's really capable of love. To love his brother's success like this. <laughs> man, Toto getting pumped up is scary. And then he, he became the Cosmos. I expected nothing less. He, he cheered himself on. That's... Yeah, okay, 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 thank god, thank god. Yeah, but Yuji can. Thought it was the perfect support. Unnecessary. I <laughs> like how this fight is happening in the credits. It just packed that much into this episode. <laughs> yes, Antonio does that. The ending too. Oh, finally, finally. I can feel good again watching this show instead of just in pain and suffering. The last, what, three, four episodes were just torture, I guess deliberately. And now there's a light in the darkness and that light's name is Toto. It's funny, like, the Toto episodes were my favorite favorite part of season one as well. And here we are again. I mean, I think this is my favorite fight. It's not because the animation or anything. It's just because of how I feel watching it. Toto, it's amazing because he feels so real to me, but also so special. Like, you're largely a function of what you're aiming for and what you're looking for and what you expect out of yourself. And one surefire way to improve is by hanging out and being inspired by people who are pushing higher than you or understand more than you, etc. It's even more impressive when that person is doing it for themselves. Like Toto is just Toto, you know, that's just who he is. He's so powerful in spirit that he can pull Yuji out of that, you know, probably the darkest five minutes er anyone has ever experienced, which is not to say that Yuji's healed. He's not. I think it's less a question of how are you feeling because feelings will fluctuate all the time or what you're thinking and more of what you're choosing. Yuji could have collapsed into nothing and let himself die or just or quit or whatever. I don't think anyone would think less of him for that given what he experienced. But with a little assistance from a brother, he looked a little bit higher and he was able to tap into that and it, it feels so much better, so much more satisfying. It feels like the, the answer.